Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I figured it might be time again to do an in-depth tank review so we'll be looking at the Soviet Object 416, a tier 8 medium tank and yeah I like to call this tank the, <laughs> the uh, frying pan because I mean just look at it, it kind of is a bit ridiculous but in my opinion it is one of the best tier 8 medium tanks, it is insanely fun to drive and uh, Hopefully I'll teach you how to perform well in this tank in this video, show you its pros and cons and then at the end you can decide whether this is a tank for you or not. If we have a look at the Object 416 in the tech tree, we can see that it leads up to the Object 430 version 2 and the T54. Now there is another possibility to get to the T54 which is through the T44 or the T54 lightweight, however I would recommend going down this line with the A44 and the Object 416, as if you go down this line you can unlock all three tier 10 Soviet medium tanks eventually. If you decide to go for the T54 lightweight or the T44, then you'll be able to get the T62A and the Object 140, but if you eventually want to unlock the Object 430 as well, you will have to grind out the entire line again from tier 6 to get to the object 430 version 2. So that's why I personally went with the object 416. Also, in my opinion, this line here with the A44 and the object 416 is slightly superior to the other two lines in its tier, uh, but that's just my personal opinion. I know there are people that really love the T54 lightweight. So um, yeah, that's fine too. So let's quickly discuss in what order you should research for modules on this vehicle. Now, considering that this is a tier 8 medium tank, which are usually infamous for having horrible stock grinds, the stock grind on this tank actually is bearable. I mean, it's not great, and it looks really horrible without the upgraded turret, but it's actually acceptable. The 100mm D10T gun, the stock gun, is okay, but it's got really horrible penetration, and the fun only really starts when you mount the M63 gun. This gun is absolutely amazing, but you have to unlock the, the upgraded tracks first before you can mount the M63 gun. After that, you want to get the turret, and then finally the radio. Actually, this R113 radio uh, will carry over from other Soviet lines, for example the heavy tank line, so if you've gone down that, then you'll probably have this radio unlocked already. I'm just going to quickly go over the stats, uh, I'll try not to dwell on them for too long. This vehicle has got the lowest hit points of any of the tier 8 medium tanks. It is insanely light at 24.45 tons, it's actually almost as light as a light tank. And it's got an acceptable engine at 400 horsepower, meaning that this tank gets a power to weight ratio of 16.36, which is quite nice for a medium tank. But there are also medium tanks with better mobility in the game, so it is kind of upper average, I'd say. Your top speed is quite nice at 50 km an hour, and your traverse speed is great at 52 degrees per second. Also, your turret traverses quite quickly. However, one drawback of this vehicle is that you cannot fully traverse the turret. It will not turn 360 degrees. The turret arc is about this far, like it's not even a complete 180 degrees, it's probably something like 150 degrees I'd say, so that would be something like 75 degrees to each side, or maybe even 80 degrees to each side. The next point we're going to talk about is not exactly the strong suit of this vehicle and that's the armour. It its armour is quite thin, it's only got 75mm of frontal hull armour, I mean it's angled slightly but realistically you're not going to pull off any bounces from the hull. 45mm at sides and rear is really abysmal. The turret front actually is not too bad at 110mm, however in my experience 90% of the shots will penetrate your turret no matter what angle they hit it. Sides and rear of the turret are not very great at 75 and 45 millimeters. So, armor wise, this tank isn't looking too good. But the great redeeming factor is the gun. This gun is absolutely amazing. In my opinion, this is the best gun on 
any of the tier 8 medium tanks. It's got a rate of fire of 7.5 which is very decent, kind of average penetration at 201mm, however this gun can fire heat boosting its penetration by almost 130mm up to 330mm and actually the HE penetration is quite decent at 50mm as well. But here is the best thing about this gun, the 320 hit points of alpha damage. That is the highest alpha damage out of any of the tier 8 medium tanks, except for the T44 and the T34-2 if you decide to mount the 122mm gun on those vehicles. But in my experience, most people uh, usually spring for 100mm, so generally speaking, you will ha you'll be able to out alpha damage any tier 8 tank you're going to meet. But the good news doesn't stop there, because not only do you have basically the highest alpha damage of any tier 8 medium tank, but you also have the highest DPM. So you basically get the best of both worlds without very many trade-offs really, at least concerning the gun. The accuracy is not bad at 0.37, it's not exactly sniping accuracy, but it's kind of like mid to close range. And the aiming time at 2.3 seconds is decent as well. So this gun is absolutely amazing. Then we also get a base 380 view range with uh, crew skill and so on. I was able to boost that to 396 meters, which is quite nice, and uh, a 760 meter signal range stock. Now, the stats of this tank kind of... Uh, put it into a bit of an awkward place concerning its playstyle because on the one hand it has got a very low silhouette, it is very fast and um, yeah, basically has got no armour and insane camo values so you could think that you might have to play this tank as a sniper similar to maybe the Leopard 1 or the AMX CDC, at least for the first part of the game you might think that you'd have to stay back and yeah, take long range shots. But the issue with that playstyle is that the gun is not insanely accurate. So uh, sometimes you will have problems doing that. Still, in my opinion, that is the best way to play this vehicle, is to play kind of more or less passively for at least the first five minutes of the game till you see an opening in the enemy lines. Because if you go into close range dogfights with the object 416 early on, you will get shredded due to your lack of armor and hit points. And also because you cannot traverse your turret fully in a one-on-one -on -one dogfight, unless you get into a situation where your opponent won't be able to outmaneuver you, uh, your opponent will quite often come out on top. So the only situations in which you can actually go ham in this vehicle is either when you're cleaning up at the end of the game or for example when enemy tanks are already in combat with another ally tank of yours and then you can just take advantage of uh, their focus being elsewhere and flank round and take shots the sides and rear. If this vehicle gets to take flanking shots it is absolutely amazing due to its great alpha damage and amazing DPM and it's kind of well, not mediocre, but just kind of average penetration doesn't really uh, come into play that much. So you'll be able to uh, make most shots count. So just in one sentence, my advice would be to use this tank's mobility to get to a good flanking position where you can take great medium to long range shots early on while trying to stay undetected. How to do that, you can actually learn in my uh, camouflage tutorial that I uploaded just a few weeks ago. That's going to be quite useful for you when you're playing this vehicle. And then later on, you can go ham when you see an opening of enemy lines or enemy vehicles are distracted. Then you can try to flank round and outmaneuver your enemies and maybe even go for the enemy RT or TDs. Yeah, um, I'm just going to quickly go over crew skills and uh, equipment. I went for Brothers and Arms and the entire crew. Probably, however, Sixth Sense, first of all, might even be better because you kind of rely on not being spotted in the first part of the game in this vehicle due to, yeah, your bad armor. And uh, repairs, it's kind of a bit of a throw up between repairs and camouflage in this vehicle. I would uh, get into a few games first of all and find out whether you want to play the kind of a passive supporting role or whether you prefer the, you know, the kind of frontline 
brawling role in this vehicle because I personally like to play very aggressively and you know seize opportunities when I get them and that's why I went for repairs but getting camouflage as a second set of skills is completely viable as well. Also you can most definitely go for recon or jack of all trades on your commander because your crew gets injured quite a lot in this vehicle due to your bad armor. However, in my opinion, recon would be slightly superior. After that, situa situational awareness would be great too because view range is awesome in this vehicle. If over gunner, I would probably just go with snapshot and then maybe dead eye later on. For the driver, smooth ride is probably the best skill you can get on this vehicle. After that, actually, clutch braking wouldn't be too bad because your turret traverse arc is limited, so. Quite often you'll have to compensate for that with traversing your hull and increasing its speed will definitely help with that. Otherwise actually preventative maintenance can be a great perk on this tank because your engine deck is at the front and you will get lit up quite often. So I'd probably go for smooth ride and then preventative maintenance. And finally for the loader, well, there's not really a great choice of skills for your loader, just go for safe storage, I guess. Adrenaline Rush isn't really very useful on this tank due to its low hit point pull, so I'd probably go for safe storage and then intuition. For equipment, I went for uh, tank gun rammer, vents and vertical stabilizer. Uh, tank gun rammer and the stabilizer are absolutely mandatory on this vehicle. However, if you don't feel like you need the vents, you could alternatively go for coated optics or binox. If you play more aggressively, coated optics would be better. If you play this tank more in a kind of a TD kind of role, then binox would definitely be a very good choice. So, yeah, as I said, I've had an absolute blast playing this vehicle, and now I hope to showcase some of that fun I've had in some exemplary gameplay that will hopefully also teach you how to perform ideally in this vehicle. So I'll see you in a second on the battlefield. So our first game will be on Ensk and now I'm going to show you a position that I personally think is quite strong at least in vehicles like the Object 416. Medium tanks and tank destroyers and which you play and don't really know what to do on a map like Ensk early on in the game. So I like to position myself right here and hope that I can spot enemies uh, that try to go to the flank along the railway lines like this T-34-1. Unfortunately I spot him a bit late so I cannot hit him anymore and because I tried to follow him I also missed the T-44 so this actually didn't work out too well for me this game but very often you can get some early damage off against enemies without a lot of risk of taking damage yourself because you can very easily draw to cover behind these railway characters. So now I can see that almost the entire enemy team is on the left flank, so that allows me to progress down these or down this platform and hope to flank my enemies in the city. I get a nice hit on the T-37 and uh, he retreats and now his T-34 is coming round to play. So I'm gonna prepare my reticle for him, but he's actually stopping there so I'm gonna go on because he's tier 7, I'm tier 8, I can quite easily engage him. Unfortunately his turret is quite tough and he's kind of in a hold down position there. So I retreat because I do not really want to uh, risk an engagement 1v1 against the hold down T-31. I kind of tried to snipe Skupola here but you can see that the accuracy on this gun is, well it's not perfect. So now I decide that I'm not going to win this engagement by staying on this range so I'm going to go ham against him, go to close quarters where he cannot go hold down anymore against me and my superior damage output will uh, shred through this guy quite easily. I'm going to take quite a bit of damage in return but it's worth it because there is not much uh, that many enemy tanks around so I can afford using some health in order to take up this tier 7 vehicle. Now unfortunately a T3090 got the jump on us and I get a hit into him but I realise now that he could quite easily clip me. Uh, luckily for me he retreats so I get time to draw into cover and now I'm in a pretty good situation because I can get a nice hit beneath that uh, carriage there onto the 1390. And he now realizes that he's within one shot range of me, so he retreats. 
but I come around the corner, auto aim at him, and take him out. So that's two enemies down for us. And now this is where you want to be in the object 416. I'm flanking around now, loads of enemies between me and my allies pushing in from the south, and I'll just hopefully be able to pick these guys apart one by one now. I don't aim my shot there, I should have probably just waited and aimed it, but I rushed it, and that's why it bounced off the T29 turret. Same thing again there, I didn't aim enough, you really often have to try to aim your shots in this vehicle. However, I put my third shot through the front drive wheel of the T29 and take him out. Same thing happens to the T32, and now I'll be able to come around here and engage these two Tiger 2s. Nice shot into the engine deck there. And another good thing about this vehicle is that the accuracy on the move actually is quite nice. And I managed to clutch snipe his cupola again thanks to my quite good accuracy on the move. And now I realise that this Tiger 2 there is probably a goner. So I'm just going to go for this IS-8 and hope to secure the top gun. Unfortunately our shot goes a bit high and bounces off the frontal turret of the IS-8. And, oh no, we can't complete the Top Gun, what a shame. Still, in my opinion, this game really showcased what the ideal situation for an object 416 is. That is, like, in this game, I kind of played passively for at least the first three minutes of the game, but then I saw an opportunity to outflank my enemies, and I came around the rear, and basically just cleaned up entirely. So, yeah, that is one of the things that the object 416 excels at. Also, hardly any of the enemies we came across in the town engaged us because they were all focusing on our allies that were engaging them from the south. So we basically just got free damage onto them. And that is a very nice situation to be in in this tank. But uh, I've got another game lined up for you guys and maybe I'll be able to secure the top gun this time. Let's see. So second game is on Runeberg, and I actually started recording this game a bit further into it, like 1 minute 30 is already on the clock. The reason for that is because I spent the first one and a half minutes just driving around the map really without any idea what I should do because I find doing something early on in the game on this map or on maps like Himmelsdorf or Enz in this vehicle is very difficult. So. That's why I just, you know, hung around the base more or less for the first one and a half minutes till I realised that I might be able to achieve something in the urban area here in the west of the map. So I got a shot into the Type 59. You can see the pretty nice penetration of this tank being able to uh, slice through the frontal arm of the Type 59 isn't something any tier 8 vehicle can do. And I'm just kind of trying to... Uh, kill him when he comes around the corner again but he's not stupid enough to do that apparently so I'm just gonna uh, drive ahead a bit and hope to get a shot around the corner maybe at the type 59 however then I spot a T34 I leave him on only 20 HP which is a bit of a shame but we rolled quite well on that shot so it's hard to complain and he gets taken out by artillery so you know fair enough the Type 59 seems to have disappeared, so I'm going to go for T32. I get shot at the slow glacius, take one in return, but actually my alpha damage is exactly as high as the alpha damage of the T32, and my reload is better, so I'm able to quite easily outduel that guy, as long as I hit his weak spots. Now I've got a Lover with me, I'm going to try to mop up that KV85 there. Let's see if we can get there quick enough to get the kill. This Lover wants it too. Ah, he gets it. Well, too bad. So, there's a GW Panther, and luckily our shot hits him, although we didn't aim completely. Now, he's starting to drive away, but he cannot flee from us, and we pick up our second kill. Unfortunately, the IS-6 picks up the FE-207, so... Not a third kill for us, but there's still an M12 left and quite a few enemies in the south. Actually, we'll have to go down there to defend our base quite soon. This game is not won yet. They've still got quite a few dangerous tanks in the enemy team. Uh, we get the M12 and we know that the Type 59 is on quite low health, so he shouldn't be a threat for us anymore. I'm not going to cap right now because uh, 
uh, they've got a lot of very fast tanks. They could basically break it if they wanted to. We don't have any vision on the eastern part of the map. And our team's in the lead, basically, so we can just, you know, pick up the extra experience rather than, you know, sit at the cap, which is quite boring. And sure enough, we spot a Cheeto. He misses a shot. We don't. A very nice roll for 360 damage. He bounces there, and we pick the, up the kill. So, you can see that, that against lower tier enemies, sometimes you will be able to get bounces, but you just should not count on it. And basically play as if every shot will penetrate, because you have to expect each shot to penetrate, even though sometimes they don't. We get the Type 59, and now we're hunting the Top Gun. Come on, I want to get it this game. AMX 12T, he can actually still clip us, so we have to be a bit careful here. Fortunately, he does not rush us, but just stays back. And now we've got an E25, and yes, we get it. Finally, a Top Gun. He's very happy to pick that up. And uh, yeah, we finished this game 15 to 7. So, this game was kind of similar to the last game because we again were able to just clean up all the kills and remaining enemies at the end of the game because we got onto a very nice flanking position and kind of got a pincer move on them in the later parts of the game. So uh, if you get into these kind of situations, that is where the object 416 in my opinion really shines and you should always try to find these kind of scenarios or openings when you're playing your games. However, do not be overly aggressive. Never forget that you do not really have a fully traversable turret and that your armor is made of paper. So you always have to be careful and you should not, you know, do not take this as an invitation to rush in 1 versus 15 and, you know, hope that you win because you outflanked your enemies. It's not going to work like that. Playing this tank to a successful degree will require quite a lot of planning and, uh, yeah, just kind of yeah planning ahead and thinking what your next move will be and what the most effective thing is you can do to influence the game in my opinion the object 416 is really the best tier 8 medium tank at the moment maybe the amx cdc is kind of as good but really i think that the combination of having the highest dpm and the highest alpha damage i mean more or less the highest alpha damage at tier 8 for a medium tank just makes this vehicle so insanely strong and also it is really mobile so as long as you know how to play around your weaknesses which are weak armor and your uh, restricted turret traverse then this vehicle is absolutely amazing and can be a devastating force on the battlefield i really recommend this tank to anybody who loves fast and uh, high dpm medium tanks i'm definitely going to keep this vehicle even after i research the t54 and I can just really recommend anyone to pick this this tank up. This is, I mean, if not my favorite tank of the game, it is definitely in the top five. It is really, really good. And yeah, I can just say it again, get this vehicle. You're not gonna regret it. It is a really good machine. So uh, thanks for watching as usual. I hope you enjoyed my video. I'm sorry that there haven't been that many uploads lately. The thing is that I have to kind of prepare for my, uh, in this next year, I'll be preparing for my final exams at school. So I have to focus on school a bit more and probably won't be able to do YouTube as much as I used to do. You will still be getting videos, but probably only like one video a month or one, one video every two weeks. I'm very sorry about that, but once I'm done with all this preparation, then probably things will be back to normal and I'll try to keep the quality of the content as high as it always was, even though the quantity might decrease. So thanks for watching. Maybe sub to my channel if you enjoyed this video and are interested in more educational and fun WOT content like this. I hope I see you in my next vid or maybe even on the battlefield and bye bye.